Okay, I hope this video is recording all right, um, but what I'm about to say is what's most important, I guess. Okay, so right now it is November 2nd, 3 a.m., Saturday. And yeah, it's finally the weekend and I'm exhausted from a long week of work and I'm in my apartment here. And the reason I'm still up at 3 a.m. when I should be in bed is first of all, when I get home from work, I'm so tired and it's so cold in uh, my apartment because um, I turn the heat down. Speaking of which, I need to turn the heat up. Oh, but anyway, um, and I have I have a lot of financial business I'm trying to manage at the first of the month, as you can imagine. So I confirmed that my rent got paid automatically. I set up auto pay for my rent, the top priority. And so that's pretty much almost all of my paycheck. I have a very tiny amount left in my um, bank account after that, and yet I paid off my credit card in full just before the end of the month. So I can now use my credit card um, to buy food and things I need or any other bills that are due before my next paycheck. So I'm still living paycheck to paycheck. Um, but I do believe I will eventually recover um, financially because, first of all, um, a lot of my expenses were one-time things that happened. You know, um, it, it has not been easy, this process of getting this apartment. I've had to work hard at it, you know, working so much overtime at my job since we're on mandatory overtime and then, you know, having to just the application and administration fees like I had to pay um, about four hundred dollars when you consider the application administration fee security deposit I had to use my credit card uh, spend about four hundred dollars just to even get in the process of getting approved uh, for this apartment and I paid my rent and some initial fees um, September 30th when I moved and now um, it's November it just barely been over a month and so this is the second month that I've I've paid my rent and in that time I've been able to do a lot of things now I paid the deposit the $110 deposit on my electric bill and also um, I'm going to wake up at 9. I'm not sure how I'm going to wake up at 9 since it's 3 a.m. and I still need to take a shower and get to bed. My sleep schedule is just out of whack, let me tell you. Um, but anyway, um, but yeah, because um, Larry is going to be taking me to the post office to get my key and the mail they've been holding for me. So, um, that's the thing is I will finally start getting my mail so yeah it's complicated there's a lot to manage and you know there's so many different websites where I have to go here and do this and so there's the there's the website that I pay my rent on there's the website that I pay my electric bill and then there's the website I'll pay my gas bill on which I can't do until I get my account number, which is in the mail that I won't get to till tomorrow. Um, so there's a website for that. There's a website for um, my Xfinity internet connection. So every little bill, every little expense, it adds up. So I'm trying to pay my rent, my my gas, my electric, my internet, my my monthly payment to my sponsored child through Compassion International. So yeah, see my expenses are high and you know that is just me renting a one-bedroom apartment and trying to pay all my bills. 
and stuff like that. Not to mention, you know, all the food I need and I spend more money on food than I would like because unfortunately I have to live off of what it, of the gas station and CVS um, because they're right on the way to work and on the way back um, the only thing that's open at that time is quick trip to the gas station and so I'm paying you know high prices but um, soon once I recover financially, I'm going to be doing online Hy-Vee orders and just have stuff delivered to my apartment so I don't freeze out in the cold trying to buy food because it's cold out there. It's, it's really cold and I've been biking to and from work in the freezing cold. I think it's been below the freezing point a few of these nights that because you realize I get off work you know, midnight, one or two in the morning, depending on the hours that week. And when it's past midnight, it's dark and it's cold. And it's highly dangerous too. But that is the situation I got myself into. It's not safe and my mom called me frequently and is worried about me. With good reason too. After all, I'm traveling it in the snow and ice and the cold on on long dark roads and stuff though not as dark as heading south on Lisa Road um, but anyway so that's what I do Monday through Friday is I'm going to work and then I work and then I come back and my bike is the best thing I have but let me tell you something there are, okay well there's this one coworker. I'm gonna try not to mention any names, but there's this one coworker that really annoys me. He's so rude, okay? You know, he's always trying to give me his little life advice. He tries to tell me I should eat meat, you know? He knows I'm a vegan now. Um, he was making fun of soy boys or whatever, you know, and then he finds out I'm vegan, you know, uh, and stuff, and so he he make tries to joke to me about eating meat, and he to, is the one who told me I should join Tinder, the dating site. I don't know why he would want me to. This is so weird. Um, uh, but then you know, then he's trying to tell me like he's told me repeatedly that I need to get a car, and I'm like, okay, well, first of all, there are so many things wrong with this guy and this is why I don't like this guy I really don't like this guy because he okay first of all he doesn't know me he doesn't know my situation financially I'm barely able to um, pay um, my rent and my bills and try to recover financially it will improve once all of the one-time payment type things are over and I start getting established on on my finances because my income is high it's just that my expenses and all the initial stuff is is hard so it's got to get easier from here I just really hope it gets easier so first of all there is no extra money to spend on car payments and gas and insurance and taxes and let me tell you I actually don't want a car I don't really want a car you know, in the past I've thought, you know, maybe I will get a car someday. But if I do, it will not be something I want. You realize that? Um, I, I understand not everyone can live without a car. And if I can live without a car my whole life, that's what I intend to do. Because there are several things I just hate about cars. Um, first of all, you have to pay property tax. I don't lo look. We're taxed enough. It's bad enough that two to three hundred dollars of taxes come as out of each of my paychecks um, that the government just takes and f uh, makes politicians rich and funds Planned Parenthood and the military and NASA and all kinds of things that I don't think money should be spent on. Not to mention the meat and dairy industry. The government subsidizes the meat and dairy industry. And once you realize how how that is, I mean nobody likes taxation, but 
most people don't like taxation just because it takes money away from them that they could use on something, which is which is a valid reason. But I don't like what our government spends, you know, the money on. I we all have disagreements about that. And let me tell you something. Um, without the government subsidizing, without the government granting federal funds to uh, the meat and dairy industry or Planned Parenthood or the military, these things would shut down because they don't they don't get enough. They're not getting enough money. Um, by people just paying out of pocket. That's the thing is sales are down on meat and dairy and eggs and stuff because people are going vegan. And that, so they're failing without the government funds, those industries would fail. And Planned Parenthood would probably fail if it wasn't receiving uh, federal uh, tax dollars and stuff. And I know that this stuff is going on. I've been reading a lot of articles that's it's, you know, just because I'm pro-life and I've followed the movement and what's going on with that. And, but, oh, it's emotional for me. But anyway, uh, I would don't want to stay on that topic. But the overall point is, you know, I don't want to have to pay more taxes for having a car. Think about it. I have a bike, but I don't have to pay more taxes to the government for having a bike. And if I did... I would probably get rid of my bike. Think about it. You can buy a, a TV, a computer, a, a DVD player. You can buy yourself a chair, a table. You can you can buy these things, but then you don't have to pay taxes and insurance and gas for those things. Yes, things can be expensive. For example, my computer takes electricity, which I pay the bill for. And I pay the bill for my Xfinity internet, um, but I, I consider these necessary things. And let me tell you, um, the, these things that I, I pay for are not as expensive as a car. I've heard the guys at work talking about just how expensive cars are, you know, people who have two or three hundred dollar car payments they have to make each month to pay off their car. And I could never do that. I First of all, I don't have extra hundreds of dollars, um, not at this point, um, that I could pay on car payments. Plus, I don't know how to drive. And, okay, look, okay first of all, yeah, financially, here's why I, I, I've already mentioned reasons I can't get a car. Second of all, I don't know how to drive. My mom knows how to drive, but doesn't have a car. She has a driver's license and is a good driver, but doesn't have a car. Um, but I don't even know how to drive. And I would have to go somewhere where they could teach me the right way to drive. And would I be able to handle the stress of driving? I think not. Um, but first of all, there's no time to do that because I work a full-time job. Other people learn to drive when they're in high school and they have driver's ed in school and they have parents and other relatives and friends to teach them to drive. So they learn to drive before they even get their own car. And half the time their parents buy them their car anyway. So I didn't have the privilege of learning to drive when I was young. And at this point I'm 32 years old and I don't know how to drive and I can't afford a car and I don't want to pay extra taxes or the expenses of gas and car insurance and all that kind of stuff. And then there's people who try to steal your car and it's like, oh, I, I, can't, I can't avoid having to have a place to live. That's why I have to pay my rent for this apartment. But I plan to avoid buying a car. I don't want a car. There are so many things I want more than a car in life. Um, but you know, that's just all, that's just a, an example. You know, people are rude, and they always want to tell me I should get a car. Everyone's like, "Are you gonna get a car? When are you gonna get a car? When are you gonna get a car, Chad? Are you stupid? Do you are you ever gonna get a car? 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 Car?" That's what people do. They've done it to me for years. They do it to my mom. It's like every time I shop at Hy-Vee, like. 
Do you have a fuel saver card? No. Why not? Well, I don't buy gas. I don't have a car. Well, why don't you have a car? Because I'm too poor for a car. Well, why are you poor? And it's like, I don't want to go into the whole long story about how I'm trying to escape the cycle of poverty that my father put me and my mother into. And it's rough. My life has been pretty rough, you know. It, my life now is better than it ever has been in history. Because I grew up, you know, in a, a family with some abuse and then there was the divorce and then my mom getting into credit card debt to feed me and to fight my father for custody of me. It's, it's a very tragic backstory I have. Um, and now here I am, I'm 32 years old, I bike to and from work, I work a very physical job and a lot of hours, but the pay is good. The pay is good and if I can just try to manage my money right and I need to get enough sleep, which I'm not doing, but I have so much in my mind, you know. I get home, I'm too tired to even take a shower, I sometimes I need to eat something, I need to wait till. I turn the heat up and then the heat goes up because otherwise I freeze as soon as I'm naked. Oh man, it's just, it's rough. But my, you know, trying to save up money and manage my health is top priority so I can keep working my job and I'm hoping to have a savings, you know. I'm, I want to be able to save money. I know it's going to take time, it's going to take months, if not years, to be able to save up the money that I need for things. And, and, and honestly, um, people can't understand my priorities and they think that getting a car is my top priority. No. My priorities are actually very simple. I want to be happy in life as long as that happiness can be obtained without hurting someone else. And people get weird with me, even coworkers at my new job about being vegan. I'm tired of them constantly asking me why I don't eat meat, dairy or eggs, you know, and stuff like that. They don't get it and they're ignorant and I, and I don't want to be the person who answers their questions. I try to answer their questions, but it's like, like I'm tired of it. Like, why don't you eat eggs? And I'm like, oh, well, that involves breeding and killing of, of chickens. And they're like, but dude, free range. It's like, oh, come on. People are so ignorant. And we have all these vegan documentaries. And I have posted link after link on my Facebook page, but does anybody care about that? No. Does anybody care about my computer programming stuff? No. Does anybody care about the the cute uh, screenshots from Love Nikki Dress Up Queen? Yes. Be and this is because people like to see happy, cute things. They don't like to look at the truth. You know what I mean? People don't like to look at the ugly reality of this world. And you know, there was another co-worker that was asking me some really kind of perverted personal questions you know and all this stuff about asking me if I had had any girls to my apartment and I'm like no and 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 she's like really and I'm like no I haven't ha ha had many guests over yet and and she, she was she was like she was she was asking me all this stuff about about girlfriends and dating and stuff like this and I'm like well I don't do sexual stuff I vowed celibacy for life and she was so surprised I mean it comes as a shock to people but it all fits together in one neat package here I am I'm just a nerd who's trying to work my job and manage my my life in my apartment and my finances and when I get a chance I play video games, do computer programming and I'm I'm vegan because I don't want to hurt animals so furthermore I'm not going to do anything sexual that's gonna that's gonna result in procreation that creates new humans that will hurt animals I mean it's so obvious I mean 
I want the human race to go extinct. I have this awkward conflict where I'm pro-life and I can't kill anybody, but I also don't want them to exist. It's a very, it's a very difficult um, thing to balance because I don't like humans and I wish that the human race, me included, didn't exist. You know, and people think that's depressing, and I'm like, maybe. But when you look at how humans are to each other and to the animals and the billions they breed and torture and kill, any vegans who have watched the documentaries and, you know, and are vegan for ethical reasons, they know. We know just how truly evil humans can be. That, and that's just speciesism. And then there's racism and sexism. And let's talk about sexual assault for a while. Women are raped all over the world. It happens in the U.S. and even more so in other countries, you know. But, you know, women who will just get raped by strange men all the time, you know. And people try to bring awareness to it and, you know, but nobody can stop it. There's too many humans each following their desires and no political system stops it no religion stops the violence and humans are just too there's too many of us and they're too powerful and no one can stop them and it makes me very sad I am very sad about humanity and what it's, how it's become but I'm trying not to let the sadness of the swamps get to me. You see, this world is a horrible place. And 99% of it is caused by humans who do terrible things. There are good humans in this world, but the 1% can't overpower the 99%. And it's very sad. And you know, Something about me that people know if they follow my my YouTube channel or Facebook for very long is that I'm transgender and I you know I'm I was born a man and I wish to be a woman and it's a very hard thing for people to understand and so I don't really talk about it at work um, but I think it's very easy to see how I've become this way when you look at my experiences and when you look at the world. I am so disgusted with men and their behavior, what they do to women, what they do to children, and, and usually it's men who do the most violence to animals. And it's a scary thought. It's a really scary thought because I realized if I did have the same testosterone levels as other men, if I did have the same upbringing as them and was raised and taught all the same ways to be as them, I would probably be like them. I would probably still be a carnist. I probably, in under the right circumstances, I might have even been a rapist. Who knows? That's just it, is that the way we're raised and our hormone levels and our sexual orientation and all these things that we have no control over they dictate our behavior it's very scary and I'm lucky that I'm not like other men and quite honestly I find it really insulting when people um, see that I look like a man and then they assume that I'm interested in having sex with women and they're trying to get me to join tinder and date women like why why do other young men care so much about trying to get me laid that I will never understand it's just weird and you know oh my head hurts from all the trying to figure humans out they're complicated you know but yeah I know this has been kind of a rant um, just kind of an incoherent rant of a tired person uh, past 3 a.m. in the morning. But that's what I'm about. Because if there's anything people will say about me, um, it's that I'm real. 
I'm very real. I'm just very real and direct and honest. And that's one thing you can always count on me for, is that I, I can't always talk openly at work you know, out in public because it's not the right place and I don't like all the attention from people noticing what an oddity I am. But I like to use the internet to express how I really feel about things and my opinions on things. And so I've, I've talked about, you know, um, uh, telling people why they should be vegan and I've explained how I'm pro-life and against abortion. I've explained why I'm an atheist, why I don't believe in God. I've explained all kinds of things about computer graphics and programming. I talk about video games, you know. I talk about, you know, LGBT issues and how I'm transgender, you know. There's so many different issues, so many topics in my head that I talk about. And they all fit together. They really all fit together um, when you have a full understanding of me, but that's the thing is, nobody truly does have a full understanding of me. You know, and nobody knows somebody as well as they know themselves. But you know, I would really like to see someone someday take more effort and try. Because I don't often have people who want to listen to me. You know what I mean? Except there are people who, you know, watch my YouTube videos and read my Facebook posts. And I appreciate it if something I've said, you know, means something to someone out there. Because I just hope that with all that I've done in my activism on the internet, that I've made some kind of positive difference. Because Often it just doesn't look like the evidence is there. And I want, I, you know, I had to get internet to make sure I can get on the various websites and make sure my bills are paid and stuff like that. But I'm gonna make full use of my internet connection. I'm gonna, I'm planning to do podcasts and, and stuff and, and you know, I can play video games too, you know, and I just really want to make use of the internet because my apartment and my internet connection is pretty much my whole world, you know, and my job is what allows me to pay for it. And it's, it's sad because, you know, I often feel very alone and because it's impossible to understand me. Um, but I'm actually doing really good in life when all things considered where I've come from and what I've been through and where I am now so yeah I need to take a shower and get to bed and all that and wake up go to the post office and do my laundry and all that sort of weekend business that I can't do the rest of the week but I am glad that I took the time to just do another one of my video rants because I have so much to say. And the great thing about the internet and video recordings is you can say things and it's preserved forever, basically. So that's all I have to say for now. Hope you enjoyed something about it.